Hello and happy Palm Sunday. I hope that your day is going well. Maybe we've uh, had our uh, Palm Sunday parade with the children. I hope that has gone well if you're watching this uh, after that. Um, I had a thought. Now, it was wonderful of Jade to, to put together the craft so that the kids could make their own uh, palm branches. And if you haven't yet made your own palm branches, check those videos out. She did a great job. Um, but as I was uh, sitting here in my office amongst uh, last year's palm leaves, y'all remember these children from Ash Wednesday and how we talked about that um, we burned the palm leaves from last Palm Sunday to make ashes for Ash Wednesday. I find myself in a bit of a quandary because I won't have palm leaves from this year's Palm Sunday. So parents, I would like to ask if you would save your children's crafts. Not that we ever want to destroy your children's crafts. Um, we put them on fruit refrigerators and put them up to, to see because they're all wonderful. But if, if they are willing and would uh, be willing to give their palm branches over to, to God, I think it would only be fitting that their palm branches would be used as natural palm branches would be used uh, to help us uh, next Lent season next Ash Wednesday to remember uh, that we're dust. And um, with that, we are uh, putting a lid on uh, Lent, so to speak, entering into Holy Week. And uh, this is going to be a wonderful Holy Week. Uh, butterflies are doing well. They're not quite out of the uh, pupa phase yet. They're in chrysalises still. But I'm going to be giving uh, updates, uh, maybe some video updates, uh, this week so that the children can see how those butterflies are doing and um, and we will uh, we will talk about that together later. Now our scripture today uh, is uh, actually not the Palm Sunday scripture. I'm backing up. We might we might be since the children are reading Mark at the moment, uh, you might think uh, that today would be Mark chapter 11, Jesus's triumphant entry to Jerusalem. And I hope you do read that today, but we're going to back up and with the children, we're going to read according to their reading plan uh, from uh, Mark chapter 10. And I'm going to look at verses 35 through 45. I'm going to read that. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to him, You do not know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So every time when my children were little, now that they're driving, it's not such a big deal, but every time we would exit a building and enter a parking lot, someone, sometimes both, would yell out, shotgun. Now the rules of shotgun, as we all learned from the office, I wanna make sure I get this quote right. The rules of shotgun are very simple and very clear. The first person to shout shotgun when you're within sight of the car gets the front seat. That's how the game's played. There are no exceptions for someone with a concussion. That's uh, Michael Scott from The Office. Uh, and that is true, and uh, I'm not going to say that there were never concussions given in the, uh, in the quest for the front seat, for the honor 
of sitting uh, next to the driver, of sitting, um, if you will, at my right hand. Um, and I know a lot of you parents have experienced that also. Uh, if Hopefully, if you have more than one kid, if you only have one child and they, may, and they still fight over that, um, then we have other, other uh, professions that can offer them some help. Shotgun. That's what James and John were calling. They took that opportunity here uh, just after Jesus was telling of his death and resurrection to call shotgun, to ask for, um, to ask for that favor, to ask for that honor. But not only uh, for that honor, because I believe uh, they were so far back in time that they remembered exactly what, uh, where the term shotgun came from. I'm kidding. They don't remember shotguns at all. They, uh, but to use an anachronism, um, they were calling shotgun in the literal sense or in the real sense also because um, for those of you who don't know, way back in the day in the Old West when, uh, when they were uh, delivering things with stagecoaches, the people would uh, sometimes get robbed and, and bandits would come to stop them. And so uh, since the stagecoach driver had to handle the reins, he couldn't defend himself. So someone would ride up front riding shotgun beside him, usually carrying a shotgun, uh, in order to help defend the stagecoach. So it wasn't just a matter of honor to sit up by the driver. Uh, it was actually a matter of being the driver's assistant. And it was um, putting yourself at risk uh, so to help keep the driver and the contents of the stagecoach safe. Sometimes when we read this passage, we don't give James and John enough credit. But Mark puts this, uh, puts this particular story right after Jesus is talking about how, for the third time that he is going to die on a cross. And it's, it's approaching soon as, this, uh, is as they are on the way to Jerusalem for the final time. So I believe that, yes, they were asking for the honor of sitting in his right and left hands, but they were also declaring that they would uh, stand with him because um, if people were coming for uh, the leader, surely they would be after the right and left hand man uh, immediately afterwards. And so this was um, naively a declaration of, of their uh, loyalty, of their intent to stay with him. Of course, we know that uh, like the rest of the disciples, they scattered when Jesus was taken. Um, they did not stay with him the entire time. John came the closest of any of the disciples, but they didn't uh, die with him right then on the cross. Jesus does allude to the fact that both would eventually be martyred for the sake of the faith, but they wouldn't right then. And then Jesus takes what I feel is their intent as he hears the grumbling of the other of the other disciples who uh, completely took the intent of James and John to be that of trying to get glory, trying to get um, honor. They, uh, uh, Jesus answered them, and he gave James and John and all of us uh, another way to attain uh, status, another way to attain um, uh, God's respect, another way to be great. Wouldn't you like to be great? I would love to be great at something. I'm good at several things, and you may be very good at, at a lot of things, but to truly be great, what, um, what a feat that would be. There are very few people in history that are called the great Alexander, the great Herod, the great, um, and they're usually uh, great for doing things like war, but uh, Yoda tells us that uh, wars do not make things great. By the way, Abby watched Star Wars the, the original trilogy this week and liked it and I was proud. Um, but Yoda was right. Wars are not what makes one great. Jesus tells us what makes us great and that is service to others. And so you have an opportunity to be great every day in many small ways and some large ways. When you give of yourself, when you serve others in um, through ministries of the church, through uh, feeding Cleburne, 
um, through uh, working at Camp Lou. You're being great when you serve others by washing the dishes, by putting the kids to bed even though it's not your turn, by listening when someone is lonely in this time and just needs a soul to talk to. You are being great. And um, as I'm speaking to people, I know who you are, many of you. I know that many of you are great people and your service is uh, greatly appreciated. But some of you have a problem allowing other people to be great, allowing other people to serve you in Jesus' name. And so during this time where we're forced to rely on those closest to us the most and are separated from those who are not part of our household, um, I urge you to allow your spouse, your children, your parents, those others in your life whom you are in contact with, to be great towards you. Not only for you to serve, but to allow them to serve because that in and of itself is a service to God. Blessings to all. Amen.